I recently went and bought myself a smart car. Now I don't know about you, but whenever I buy a new car, I like to go and look on the owner's forums to see what advice people have got for me. Now one of the things that people seem to be talking about a lot on the smart forums was miles per gallon. Now the problem with the smart car is that it doesn't show the current miles per gallon on the dashboard. So people were buying these things and installing them into their cars to show the current miles per gallon. This is called a scan gauge. Now I had no idea that these things existed. They apparently run on the ODB2 system. Which is the onboard diagnostics, which is fitted to most modern cars. Now I was aware that onboard diagnostics could read what was wrong with the engine, etc. But I never knew that it was possible to read current stats from the engine and display those on your dashboard as you were driving along. Things like miles per gallon, current speed, etc. So of course that meant that I had to go and have a look online to see what kind of things I could get to plug into my ODB port. So I looked at the scan gauge, it was about £100. There was a seeming like a copy type device called a turbo gauge for about £70. There was a thing called the Kiwi which was about 67 but it was very simple, it just said miles per gallon. But the one I ended up choosing was this. It's an LCD display that shows a lot of different bits of information at the same time. A lot more information than the other types of gauges. So I purchased this from Chinavasion. It cost me about £81 plus postage plus import duty. And let's have a look at it. It comes in this plain white box, so I still don't know what to call it really, because all it said in the description was ODB Diagnostic Tool. But here's what you get inside the box. You get the device itself, a cable, a stand, and a CD. Here it is. It's a little bit smaller than I was anticipating looking at the pictures. It's a pretty simple device. On the top, you've got four buttons. The ODB cable that's supplied with it is nice and long. It's got a flat ribbon cable, and it plugs in on this side of the device here. So I'll just unravel that and plug it in. Now you don't need a long cable really because these ODB ports have been specified that they've got to be located below the driver's steering wheel somewhere on modern cars. So you don't need it to stretch all the way across the car. Now I'll just plug the uh, stand into the back as well, which just slides in upwards like this. Now it only goes one way, it won't slide down. So if you're thinking of attaching it sort of downwards, it's not going to work. It has a sticky back base on there which I'm not going to peel off because I don't plan on using the stand. Now the stand does have this kind of ball joint, it's a plastic stand but it's got a, an articulated joint here so you can uh, position it in different places. So if you really wanted to stick it to the top of your dashboard you could do that but it's not something I plan on doing because I think people might nick it thinking it's a satellite navigation system. Now let's see what's on this software that came with it. Well, all that was in it was a Word document which had the instructions on it. They're not particularly brilliant, it just talks you through the menus, which you can kind of figure out yourself. It doesn't tell you what each of the things in the menus actually means. Now, here's my car dashboard, and here's where the ODB port is, as I mentioned, below the driver's side. It's got a flap that just uh, flips down. It depends on your car. Some might have a screw connector that you have to remove first. And then the ODB just plugs into it there. And if, uh, when you first turn it on, it asks you um, what kind of car you're using and a few questions like that. You just OK through a few menus. My car wasn't on there, so I just picked a general car. I think all the car thing does is change the logo when you switch it on, to be honest. But anyway, once I'd got it all set up, this is where I put it in my car, down on the right-hand side here, out of sight. So we'll switch it on, and we'll have a look what's on the display. So this is the bit where I think your car would show up on the screen if you were able to choose your car. Mine just shows a generic car. And this is the display that greets you. It's got six different bits of information on it. Uh, things that I don't really understand, to be honest. At the bottom left, I can see that's the voltage that's going through it. And at the top right is the temperature of the engine, I think. Now, if you press OK, you get into the menu system. And if I go down to instrument settings and flip down to the interface set, there we go. Right, now I've got three different things I can choose from here. Configure the interface of the idle mode, the tour mode, and the race mode. So I'll explain those three modes. The idle mode you've already seen, that's what it shows when you turn the car on and the car isn't moving. 
Now the tour mode is this one. It's got a speedo on the left and six bits of information on the right hand side. Now the race mode is three different dials. Now all of these things are configurable. I'll show you that in a minute. You can change everything on these displays, but they are still the three different modes. Now you can choose which one you want as a default to come on when you're moving along. I've chosen tour on mine, but you could choose race, which is the three dial one that I showed you. Now you can change any of these things, as I mentioned. So what you have to do, you have to pick the dial that you want to change or the bit of information. And then you can scroll down through all the different pieces of information that are being supplied to the device and choose to display one of those instead of one of the presets. And as you can see, there's a load of different pieces of information that you can put on the display. A lot of these I just don't understand what they are, but I suppose if you were a proper petrol head, you'd know exactly what they meant. So we're just about reaching the bottom of the list now. Right, so here's the idle mode. Now we'll set the car off rolling and I'll show you what happens. We'll set off going now and it flips into the tour mode, which is the one I selected to show when the car's moving. Now, sorry about the shaky camera work. I was actually holding the camera whilst driving here, which is something I don't recommend, but unfortunately I couldn't manage to find a way to hold the tripod in place while I was driving along. Right, now we'll slow the car down and as it reaches zero, you'll see that it flips back into the idle mode again. Now, as I say, you can select which mode you want it to show when you're driving, and you can also flip between the two different race mode or tour mode, just at the click of one of the up or down arrows. So here's the race mode as I'm driving along. Now, I've set it up to show revs on the left, current fuel economy on the right, and average fuel economy in the middle. The lower the number on the right, the better. So here's the dashboard on the car. As you can see, there's not much information to look at on there. But if we um, move the camera across and have a look down at the extra display, you can see there's more information on there than I'll ever possibly need. We've got the speed on the left again, the revs at the top right, current time that we've been driving for, 17 minutes, and a few other bits and pieces of information on there as well. Now it can also be used as a standard ODB2 diagnostic tool and there are menus that will show you all the different things that might be wrong with your car. But since there is nothing wrong with my car and also the fact that I don't know what any of these things mean, I've left this part out of the video. Now some good things to mention, the sun doesn't affect the display as you can see here. Whether it's in the dark or in the sun part of the display it's both totally readable, so that's quite good. Now another clever thing, if you look at the red lights across the top here, the OK isn't lit up and that's because I can't press OK at the moment because I'm driving and they don't want me to go into the menus. The only time you can go into the menus is when you're in idle mode, which is lit up OK at the moment. So in race mode, as you can see again, the OK isn't lit up and all I can do is flip between race mode and tour mode on the display. Now another thing you can do, you can see the three dials here. You can change those to whatever you want, of course, but you can also change the scales on them. If you look at the revs in the middle here, I've got it set to 0 to 8,000 revs, but my car only goes up to 7,000. So I've moved it across to the left here and I've put the maximum revs as 7,000. The whole thing is very configurable. You've just got to spend a bit of time over it. Now there are a couple of issues with the device. The first one is that there's a few spelling mistakes in it. Not a big deal, but notice on the right there it says instant fuel consume rather than instant fuel consumption. However, a much bigger deal to me is the fact that the whole thing is in metric. It's all in litres and kilometres and it can't be switched over into miles and gallons. Now, I grew up knowing about miles per gallon. I don't know anything about how many litres per 100 kilometres should be used on an average journey. All I do know now is that I've got to keep that needle on the right there as low as possible. But if you can't cope with litres and kilometres, then this isn't the device for you. However, if you do fancy getting hold of one of these, there is a link to the product in the video description. But now, all that remains for me to say is thanks for watching.